on this episode. Oh my goodness, that's huge. Labrador Rex has an extraordinary problem. The biggest mass I've seen on a leg. But Audrey faces a huge dilemma. The whole leg's just gonna burst open. Do you even do this operation? Oh dear, you've got grumpy face already on. Tallulah's thyroid gland needs to come out. That's an overactive gland, let's just take it away. Mm -hmm. But Scott will be under pressure. You do need to be on top form to be able to perform this surgery. Where we're currently petting under the wings and down the back is all a no-go zone. And Jacqueline dishes out some home truths to a cheeky cockatoo. Hello, mommy. Hello, mommy. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. Rex has been next one. In Sydney, Audrey's waiting for a new patient that needs surgery for a massive problem. Hello. Hello. Hi. Is this Rex? Yes. Hi, Rex. Rex. How are you? Oh, my goodness. That's huge. Gosh. I think I know why you're in today, Rex. That's yes. huge. Yes. My goodness. When Rex walked in, I don't think I even saw Rex. I just saw this lump. It's the biggest mass I've probably seen on a leg. I'm actually really surprised that Rex is walking around at all. You know what, let's just go straight into consult and have a look at that. That's, that's a whole other leg on a Rex, leg, isn't it? Come. Oh, Rexy. Hello. Hi, Rexy. Can you turn around and I can have a look at this huge lump? This lump is pretty shocking. I mean, you don't see a lump like that every day, let alone hanging off a leg. And it's made the skin really inflamed. There's obviously a lot of pressure and pain, and we're just concerned about what's going on in there. The last few months, it just became bigger, yeah. Yeah, so it was a small sort of lump about that big? Yeah, just... maybe, yeah, and it was getting bigger, getting bigger, but like... Sandy and husband Wes first noticed a lump on the Labrador's left hind leg several years ago, but were told it was harmless. Rex has had the lump for four years, but it was small. And then recently it just got bigger and it is affecting his walking and sitting down. It seems like it's hurting. So then we were concerned about it. Come here, come here. Good boy, good boy. Unfortunately, we didn't have any kids, so Rex is our baby. Good boy, good boy. He's part of our family. We just love Rex. He means everything to us. He's just lovable and he's friendly. How old is Rex now? Rex is 10. We got him when he was eight weeks old. Eight weeks old, so yes, he had him was since a puppy? Puppy, yes, yes. Oh, so he's a big part of the family, I'm yes, sure. Yes, he is a big part. He's our baby. <laughs> That is actually feeling a lot firmer than I thought. I was thinking when I saw it, you know, it might be a big bag of fluid. Oh, um, right, yeah. But okay. actually having a feel of it, it feels quite firm, yeah. almost like it's, it's a soft tissue. tissue. Yeah. 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 I know. Okay. okay. As I'm examining Rex, there's a lot of concerns in my head. The sheer size of it makes surgery difficult. Also, what is it? Is it attached to bone? Is it a bone tumour? Is it a soft tissue tumour? Or is it just this big bag of fluid sitting on top of the knee like a cyst? So all of these things are important when you're thinking about surgically removing it. And you can almost see his skin has changed colour here. Yeah, so I think there definitely is some fluid around it. Audrey fears if she doesn't operate immediately, Rex's health is in serious danger. Um, but also what's going to happen is that that may burst. Yeah. You can see that skin is just stretched to its maximum. Yeah, that's what we were scared of. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. if it bursts, it's just, it's just, yeah. you, it's just something that we can't salvage, yeah. yeah. You can tell that Sandy and Wes are putting on a really brave face. They've been concerned about surgery and anaesthetic this whole time, and that might be why it's got to this point and we're having this conversation now. But either way, I think they agree that surgery is the best thing to do today. What's best for him? I mean, we, we know there is risks involved, but like, you know, yeah. whatever's best for him. Yeah. All right, you want to say bye to Mummy and Daddy? Thank you. We love you, Rexy. Bye. Bye, my Good luck. He's in good hands. Don't worry, Mama. I feel okay. I feel comfortable. Now that I've met um, Dr. Audrey, I'm sure they'll do their best for him.
you, Daddy. At Scott's practice in the UK, it's a big day for Anastasia, who's brought in her elderly cat to Lula for risky thyroid surgery. Good morning, Anastasia. How Good are morning. you? Good Good thanks. How are you? Good. Hi, Tallulah. How are you, sweetheart? How are you doing? She's not looking that impressed. No, she's not been fed this morning, so she's a little bit grumpy. Right, OK. Well, <laughs> she's an old lady, so she's allowed to be a little bit grumpy, aren't yeah. you? Hey, come on then. Let's go and have a chat about you. Anastasia is understandably anxious about the little companion she's had for 16 years. I got to Lula when I was at university, which was 2005. I've obviously been through a lot with her. You know, she's kind of always been there through the highs and the lows, like a real part of the family. She's been an amazing cat, bless her. Don't for your dinner. Lulu started losing weight about a year or so ago. Because she's quite old, I thought, I wonder if this is old age. And then had tests at the vets and turned out to be hyperthyroidism. Scott examined her, he found in her neck, the thyroid gland that's affected is really quite swollen, it's quite enlarged. So he recommended the surgery to remove it. Love you, darling. I'm not going to bother you too much because I know you get a bit grumpy. <laughs> oh dear, you've got a grumpy face already on, haven't you? The reason that I think this surgery is going to be so beneficial is it just irritates me that there's such a large goiter mm. there. Yeah. Like the goiter's about this big. Yeah. You know what, that's an overactive gland. Let's just take it away. Mm -hmm. Hypothyroidism is the thyroid gland being overreactive. And normally that is a result of the growth of a benign tumor on it. And it's not something that we do lightly to yeah. consider removing her thyroid. Mm -hmm. But if we can get her through the anesthetic, then the removal of the overactive gland that very likely has that benign mm. tumor on it mm -hmm. is the best route forward. All right, darling. Hi, Bree. Hi. Meet Rex. Hi, Rex. And his lump which we haven't named yet. It's huge. In Sydney, Audrey is shocked at the size of a lump on Labrador Rex's leg and fears it could burst at any moment. And I want to stick a needle in it. Yeah. Because I have a suspicious feeling that part of that is the mass, but the other part might just be this big, heavy, thick bag of fluid. It's all right, darling. I was hoping to stick a needle in and all this inflammatory fluid would come out. Um, but that actually feels quite firm and blood. So if it's a firm, bloody mass, that's everything you don't want to hear when you're going to remove something that size. Amazing. If the lump on Rex's leg is cancerous or malignant, then that could be very dangerous because we haven't got enough margins or tissue around it to remove it all. That might mean that Rex has to lose his leg today. All right, well, let's x-ray, make sure it's not attached to bone. I think we're getting more of a picture of what this is going to be like. As Audrey and nurse Bree x-ray Rex, they see it's quite a big operation. His adoring owners, Sandy and Wes, prepare for a long and anxious afternoon. Big day for all of us, yeah, because it could be cancerous and if the leg has to be removed. We just have to deal with it, I suppose, yeah. So there's a few things that are good and a few things that are bad that I'm seeing. It's not involving the bone at all, so it's not a horrible bone tumour, which is great. So good news is we can probably go in and try and operate. My concerns are, am I going to be able to get the whole lump off or am I going to go in and it's attached to all these vessels and all these important structures that I can't really get it all off in one and I just have to almost salvage it. So I still don't completely know what I'm going into. While the x-ray results are mixed. So Rex's bloods are in and it's looking pretty good. Blood tests give 10 year old Rex the all clear to undergo surgery. Liver function's great. Kidney function's great. For an old boy, I'm pretty happy to go ahead with anesthetic. Oh, this is about to pop. Look at it. It's about to pop. But once shaved, 
Rex's lump reveals a complex network of blood vessels that could prevent surgery from going ahead. Up here is really stretching, down here is upon bursting. It's just, the whole leg's just gonna burst open. And at this stage, like with all the vessels that I'm seeing, I don't know if I can remove it. Doubt is setting in now. Do you even do this operation? Do you just take a biopsy, see what it is, and then talk about amputating this leg? Penthouse views. At the Bird and Exotic Animal Clinic in Melbourne, Vet Jacqueline has a hospital full of patients that aren't every pet owner's idea of a fur baby. Pretty sure you're listening. The head came up. An exotic in the vet world is everything that's not a dog or a cat or a large animal like a farm animal. So birds, rabbits, guinea pigs, rats, mice, lizards, turtles, snakes, things like hermit crabs or tarantulas. And I've been doing this for 12 years now and I'm still excited for the random creatures that walk through my door. Oh, he loves the cuddles. Hey, kisses. Today, Jacqueline's first patient is a 36-year-old cockatoo named Wally. You gonna say hello? Hello. Hello, Wally. Hello, Wally. Adoring owner Pam only recently found out Wally is actually a female. We love him. We found out Wally's really well named. Recently, Wally's developed a nasty lump on her bottom. You can get all fixed up, hopefully. Yeah. Hi, Wally. Hello. Oh, what a lovely girl. Hopefully, they might be able to do something here. And if not, well, I'll be devastated and cry and cry. I know, hey? I know how much Wally means to Pam, and it's absolutely beautiful. I have pet parrots myself, so I completely understand how much that bond means. I need to have a feel. And it's getting caught on everything from the looks of it. Started bleeding a little bit on yeah, and off. There's a lot of extra fat deposits actually within the skin there. Before Jacqueline starts fully investigating the worrying lump, she wants to find out if it might be linked to lifestyle. He likes Chinese food, Kentucky chicken, don't you? Uh-huh. Feeding our pets, just like feeding any family member, is a love language. The downside to that is, when you're a cockatoo, that love can sometimes be very problematic and potentially even life-threatening. And Jacqueline can see more disturbing evidence that's immediately ringing alarm bells. Where we're currently petting under the wings and down the back mm -hmm. is all a no-go zone. So, unfortunately, what we're Sorry. seeing right now, <laughs> oh, well, we'll the reason there. she loves it so much yeah. is that it's a little bit more than just friends is the signal we're getting. Oh. So, yeah. right. From the shoulders above yeah. is okay. This is platonic. We're mates. Yeah. We've just met. But, hello, Wally. Hello, Wally. <laughs> If we start stroking down the back or under oh, the wings, well, all yeah. those very intimate locations, oh, that says, hello, how are you? Let's make babies together. Mm -hmm. The reason I think that this lump has developed to the size that it has is a high fat diet and being in very active reproductive state. And when their reproductive system is on really high alert, all of those things can basically make her more likely to deposit fat but Jacqueline fears Wally's ugly lump could actually be far more complex than simply fat deposits. If we've got loops of gut trapped inside this lump and it's actually a hernia, every time Wally takes a step, there's a risk that the muscles could tighten around that if she has gut with no blood supply. And if we end up with bits of her intestines dying off, that is absolutely life-threatening. Hello, Wally. irritates me that there's such a large goiter mm. there. Yeah. Like the goiter's about this big. Yeah. And so to try and medically manage a tumour of that size, mm. it's such a challenge. Yeah. Whereas actually to go, you know what, that's an overactive gland, let's just take it away. Mm -hmm. In London, Scott is explaining to Anastasia why risky surgery on her 16-year-old tabby Tallulah is necessary, despite the dangers of operating on such an old cat. 
given Lulu medication didn't really work, she reacted quite badly to it. There was a lot of vomiting and she was just generally really unwell. But her thyroid gland is quite big and I just think if that was me, I would find that really uncomfortable. How are you feeling about it? I think it will be the best thing for her moving forward, but I'm naturally a little bit worried. <laughs> She's like a child, I've had her for 16 years, and there's always a, you know, a risk attached to surgery, especially at her age. When they get to this age, you kind of think, oh, you know, maybe she's not going to be around for forever, and you kind of really start to think about it then. It's okay, darling. Love you, darling. Back at home, Lulu's son Sprout is already missing his mum and wants her home soon. So Sprout, who's her son, he is 14. Well, when she had the kittens, obviously that was highly exciting. And he was the first to be born. And I just really wanted to keep one of them. Sprouty. You know, I know how important she is to your family uh, and to Sprout. So um, okay. together we're gonna get her through this. We'll get to the other side and then no more medication. All right. Okay, thank you. Tallulah is much loved. Anastasia absolutely adores her. And when it comes to the surgery, the removal of the gland, it's tricky because there's a huge amount of really important structures around the site. So there's the jugular vein, there's arteries, there's really big nerves. And all of those things are literally within millimeters of the thyroid. And I don't want the end of her life to be at my hands. Bye-bye, Lulu. Say bye. Bye, bye Mummy. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. bye. See ya. I'm going to go in and get a biopsy out of it, but whether I can remove it or take some of the weight off it, I'm, I just don't know until I get in here. In Sydney, Audrey is having second thoughts if surgery to remove an enormous lump from Rex's leg is possible. It's going to be really hard to remove. This is definitely one of the most challenging things I've done. What's most worrying is that there's these blood vessels traveling all over this mass and some of them look quite big. So if I can't get that mass safely away from those blood vessels, there's a risk of him bleeding to death on the table. And then I'm just struggling to see what's the right thing to do versus what's the best thing to do in terms of quality of life. I know that mum and dad want to get it all off so that he can walk, whether it's nasty, whether it's not nasty, just get it off so he can walk and have a good quality of life. And now I'm thinking like I can't even give them that. And if the decision ends up being amputation, which is where we're leaning towards at this point, that's a really hard decision for mum and dad to make. Because what happens is if there's a tumour or mass in the body for so long, it almost forms its own blood supply, like another organ in the body, and the body just feeds it. That's why it grows. And with a tumour that grows that quickly, as in Rex's case, it could be a really malignant, nasty tumour. After weighing up the risks, Audrey decides to try to remove Rex's potentially dangerous lump. Okay. You ready? As a vet, you are designed to think of all the worst case scenarios. And the reason why you do that is so that you can avoid all those worst case scenarios. But you've got to kind of keep level headed. You've got to keep calm because you've got to get the task done. And if you're too worried about all of these things, you're actually never going to get it done. OK, I'm cutting. All right, my love. In London, Scott is set to perform surgery to remove Tallulah's thyroid gland, which has a large tumour on it. Just a little bit of pre-med, just to make you feel a little bit sleepy. As I said, lots of really important structures in this area. So there's the windpipe, the trachea. You got the jugular vein there. You got lots of really important nerves, carotid artery as well. And then you've got the thyroid. So. You do need to be on top form to be able to perform this surgery. No shaky hands today. So I do have my whole team on standby to make sure we all do our best for Tallulah. It's one of those things like I feel like this is going to be surgery with kitten gloves. So just really delicate. Everything is really calm and quick. Like a thief in the night I'm going to be. I'm just going to pluck out her thyroid and then run. 
So just underneath my fingers here is the kind of big kidney bean, which is the enlarged thyroid gland on Tallulah's left neck. So I'll be going in, I have to separate muscle and have to very carefully navigate between the windpipe, blood vessels and nerves, make sure nothing gets cut and we just remove the abnormal thyroid. So wish me luck. That's just cutting now, Gina. Okay. Yeah. All right. Say so right. thanks, Mum. Thanks, Mum. At Melbourne's Bird and Exotic Animal Clinic, Jacqueline is alarmed at the massive lump on Wally the Cockatoo's rear end and needs to do urgent x-rays. At this stage, I think surgery is what she's going to need. The question is, what's hiding inside that lump? So hopefully we'll be able to see if we've got any obvious kind of loops of bowel tracking out in our lumps because we don't want to try and cut through here to remove that lump and take out anything we shouldn't at the same time. But because of where the, the leg is positioned and just the, the angle, we can't tell just from looking at this if that's a hernia or not. The x-ray has confirmed that surgery to remove the lump is going to be extremely delicate. For Ona Pam at home, it's going to be a long and nervous wait. I'm apprehensive. Uh, I mean, look, he's just such a part of our family. I lost my husband August last year, and that was his bird. You know, I think I'd be quite a mess for a while if something happens to him today. Wally, if nothing else, you're going to smell like a new woman with this lump gone, my darling. To reduce bleeding, Jacqueline is using heat from an electric current to make the first incision around the lump. Doesn't smell great, but it works. It's kind of our first bit done. So once I'm through that area, I put the electric cautery down. I'm getting out instruments that are a little bit more delicate because I need to be able to carefully work my way through the tissue. Now that we've got most of this detached, all going well. This bit will hopefully just peel off nicely for us, which is fantastic. Ah, oh, look at that. Fabulous. Whoop. Oh, gross. It's literally the size of my fist. Oh, wow. Well, that is good because there's a nice big crater here and all of that body wall and muscle layer is beautifully intact, which is exactly what we wanted. And that is gonna give Wally the best possible chance of recovery. All right, last stitch going in. So now we've finished our surgery. Uh, we have to work pretty quickly. I'm really happy with that. But suddenly there's a problem. Heart's very faint. Right. Cool. It's probably positional, but let's roll her. Got the gloves off. So we've just got a little bit of a low heart rate after our anesthesia. You see what I'm doing is I'm blunt dissecting through the muscle that lies above the gland and then right underneath. There's the gland there. In London, Scott's attempting to remove the diseased thyroid gland from 16-year-old cat to Lula, aware one false move could fatally sever a major blood vessel. So there's the gland and there's the artery. So, and it's a big artery. I mean, that's, that's big. That would hit the wall if you cut that. The blood pressure is saying 77 over 53. And everything else is fine. Heart rate seems fairly stable, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, the heart rate is fine. Okay. Yeah. After half an hour of delicate and nerve wracking surgery, Scott extracts Tallulah's diseased thyroid. There's the gland there. In very small amount of cases, this can be a malignant type of tumour but in 95% of cases, it's just a benign growth that causes 
extra thyroid tissue to be produced and therefore extra thyroid hormone better out than in. All done. Right, so, shut up. I'm really happy with Tallulah's surgery. It went really well. There was virtually no bleeding. I found the gland very easily. There was no damage to any of the surrounding tissues. I was able to remove it and it's come away without a hitch. So yeah, I'm very happy. Now, it's always nice being at the tail end of a surgery that's gone well and, and just bringing them back to the world. That's nice. Okay. All right, should we put you back in? Hey, okay. another nana nap. Mm -hmm. Ready? Oh, good girl. Come on then. Come on then. So you go first. Let's see. Okay, okay. While surgery has gone well, Scott is concerned about Tallulah's recovery, given the 16-year-old's advanced age. Okay, good girl. Let me go and call your mummy. I think Gina may we'll just stay, stick by her for a little bit of yeah. time, hey? Yeah. Let's let Auntie Gina look after you for a little bit. Okay. Nurse Gina will keep a close eye on the elderly tabby until she's out of danger. I know, sweetheart. Oh, dear. Okay, I'm cutting. In Sydney, Audrey is operating on 10-year-old Rex to remove a massive and potentially cancerous lump riddled with so many blood vessels, surgery is almost impossible. That's the knee and that is the mass there. Oh, wow. Worst case scenario is I open him up and it just is too complicated. There's blood vessels everywhere, it's attached to every major structure there and it's too risky. I'll just have to close it up and basically give mum and dad the bad news that I can't do anything. I hope it's not that option because the whole reason we're risking his surgery today and risking his anaesthetic is because we want to make his life more comfortable. I just don't want to hit a bleeder because if something starts bleeding, it's going to be really hard to find the end of the vessel to tie off. So I'm just trying to be careful. There is a huge vessel there, oh my God. Okay, we're going to need the light on this side. See that one? Oh my God, oh my God. Despite facing massive obstacles, Audrey suddenly makes a discovery that could alter the course of Rex's life. I can see that there's this really thick capsule around the whole of the lump that I'm seeing, and on top of this capsule is all these blood vessels, so the ones that I were worried about. The capsule is like a really thick shield that the body makes around things to protect the body. The good news is that the capsule is the thing that's holding all these terrible blood vessels and not actually the mass. So I'm hoping if I can open up the capsules, I'll avoid a lot of the blood vessels that I was worried about and we could possibly get this mass mostly out. There's a vessel. Oh yeah. Things are changing in my head. I realise the possibility that I can take it all off. So I'm really relieved. Big high five in my head and he can get home to mum with a whole new day. Go for it, just go for it. After three long and stressful hours of surgery, Audrey is on the brink of achieving what she initially thought might be impossible. I can feel it. It's so close. It is. I can feel it. Flip it. Um, um, I've got it. You got it? Yep. Because of the enormous weight of the unsightly lump, an extra set of hands is needed. I'm going to get the spin off. Ready? OK, it's coming. Wow. Right. It's been a massive win against the odds. I have removed all of the mass, which is great, and not managed to make him bleed. Now I'm just going to close up all the dead space because a lot of dead space has been left from the big lump that was in the leg. But with Rex now under anaesthetic for a worrying three hours, Audrey must sew up the 10-year-old's remodeled rear leg as quickly as possible. How are you? I'm good, thank you. In London, Anastasia has come to pick up her much-loved tabby Tallulah following risky surgery to remove the 16-year-old's diseased thyroid gland. I've been a little bit anxious today I and mean, I was quite calm this morning when I dropped her off.
but I think leaving her here just kind of made it feel very real. Um, so it's been on my mind all day and I have been quite worried. Tallulah's 14-year-old son Sprout has also been anxious at home without his mum. So he's kind of spent most of the day just in the back garden, you know, <laughs> on edge, I guess, a little bit and waiting for her to come home. Hi, Anastasia. Hello. Here she oh, is. Hello, sweetheart. Hey, hi, Mummy. Hello. Yeah. Oh, look at you. <laughs> look at your little haircut. Yes. Very She's sweetheart. done so good. She's yeah. done really well. And I, and I think now, you know, it means no more medication. Yeah, that's brilliant. You can just let her relax and enjoy her twilight years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Without being hassled constantly by daily medication. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, you're Thank welcome. you. I actually think that Tallulah's recovery is going to be pretty swift. Uh, it's almost likely that tomorrow she'll be completely back to normal. I'm really hopeful that Tallulah literally won't know that anything's happened. All we've mm -hmm. got to wait for now is the results of the histopathology, mm -hmm. which, as I've said before, I'm feeling confident that it will come out as just a benign growth. Yeah. But I just want to prolong her life as much as I can, but as long as she's healthy and happy, not in a selfish way, just because I want her, obviously I do want her around, but I just want her to be as happy as possible. Good girl, all yeah, right. Happy. Let's get you home. There like a sprouty, all hopefully yours. he'll look after you. Yeah. Okay, thank all you very right. much. You're very thank welcome, you. all the best. Thank you. Bye, Tallulah. Take care, should we say bye bye? See you later, Anastasia, all Thank the best. you. Thank You're welcome, bye. Bye bye. I'm really pleased, I don't think it could go any better. In Sydney, Audrey has successfully removed a massive one and a half kilogram lump from the hind leg of Labrador Rex. It's a brand new leg. I think mum and dad are gonna be super happy about that. Rex's devoted owners, Sandy and Wes, have been keeping an anxious vigil and can't wait to be reunited with the friendly dog they regard as their child. Today was a very stressful day. We were both really worried about our little boy. Hello, hello. Oh my gosh, how was the wait? Oh, it was. Yeah, that's okay. We got it all out, but come in and we'll have a, a bit of a chat. He's such a brave boy. I've got him in there waiting for you. Oh, Rexy, you're a good boy. Hi. Yeah, you're still a little bit out of it. Now the mass was huge and there was a moment there when we were prepping him that we didn't think that we were going to get it all out only because this mass had a huge blood supply to it so that's why it's growing so quickly there's nothing better than reuniting rex with his parents you can see that he loves them so much and they love him back and i can see that they were so happy that we managed to get it all out so i think they're happy to get their boy home and i'm happy that he gets to go home pain-free today yeah we're grateful Sandy is overwhelmed that her precious boy has survived surgery. It just breaks my heart. He's okay. But it'll be another long week before test results confirm whether Rex's lump is cancerous. Hey, buddy. Have a good sleep tonight. All right, he's ready to go. Heart's very faint. Right. Oh, it's probably positional, but let's roll her. In Melbourne, Jacqueline is racing against the clock to save Cockatoo Wally after her heart dropped dangerously low at the end of surgery. Of course, we've decided to drop our heart rate and things. Just as we're turning off the anaesthetic gas, Wally goes from being perfectly stable for her whole procedure to suddenly dropping and slowing her heart rate. All right, she's just got her heart rate. Yeah, cool. I go into emergency management mode. How can we stabilise Wally? What can we do to make sure her blood pressure's okay? And just as soon as the thought has come to me, Sam's telling me it's okay and Wally stabilises again so I can continue breathing at my normal rate. She's okay. Good. Oh, birds. And you just had to give you that little kick of stress and adrenaline. Oh. Take it out. Yeah, cough, 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 my lady. All right. Where's your head gone, Wally? 
You are a woolly woolly. Come back here, please. One sleepy, sleepy bird. Hi, Wally. Oh. No. Can eat that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, thank you. Excuse me, madam. Cockatoos are extremely cheeky, and coming out of an anaesthetic is no different. The moment Wally opens her eyes, the first thing she does is turn and chomp on Stan's stethoscope. Excuse me. Excuse me. Please, no choose violence. Once Wally's woken up, she's still a little sleepy and it's going to take a little bit of time for her to breathe off the last of the anaesthetic meds. Come on. To make sure that Wally is recovering as we expect, we move her from being in our hands into a recovery box. Oh. That way we can watch how she's standing, make sure that her wound is okay and stable and we can keep talking to her and keeping an eye on her as she starts to come back around. You're a little bit sleepy, but still want scritches. I'm so excited to call Pam and let her know that everything's gone well in the surgery, Wally's awake and back to her happy self. Hello. Hello, Hello Wally. Wally. Wally's gonna stay with us tonight at the clinic so that tomorrow morning I can have tea and crumpets with her, get her medication in there, and then get mum to come and pick her up so they can go home and recover together. Good girl. Cute. Oh my gosh, he was only a baby. Two weeks after Audrey performed long and risky surgery to remove an enormous lump from Rex's leg, the much-loved Labrador is recovering well. It's amazing. I'm just happy to see it's Rex's leg back to normal. Despite fears the unsightly growth may have been cancerous, tests have revealed it was a benign fatty lump, and owner Sandy is overjoyed. Rex is tired. So we're hoping he's still got a few more years of life in him and he's, yeah, he's still playful and full of life, yeah. Oh, gross. It's literally the size of my fist. Two weeks after Jacqueline removed a fatty lump from Wally's leg, the cheeky cockatoo has recovered well and is enjoying her new mobility. Well, now. Test results for the lump were all clear, and Wally is now back enjoying tea with her loving owner Pam. Lucky Wally. And sneaking the occasional chip. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.